Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us today, January. Just as people are coming in and getting their audio connected, I'm gonna ask Phil to cue up some sounds from the other than human world that we can just use as a, as a anchor for dropping in. Welcome everyone, take a few deep breaths as we allow our sounds to just fade out here. I love how that almost sounded like taking some breaths, didn't it? <laughs> All right, so we have a, an interesting gathering for you today. Um, myself, Reverend Erica Allison, I am actually gonna be uh, taking more of a lead today along with Victoria because we are down two people. We, uh, William will not be able to join us today and I'll let Victoria speak to that. And Sarah also is down with COVID. So we're down two today, but we still have a, a fun and um, compassionate service to share with you. So thank you all for being here. Victoria. Hey, ha happy, uh, not quite new, but still sort of new year. Tell us about William real quick. So everyone uh, knows. Well you know, William uh, does animal Reiki at uh, an animal sanctuary in New Jersey. And the last trip was a little bit rough and he managed to injure himself. So he is convalescing and, you know, he's here in spirit, which means he's here with his video off. <laughs> we won't be hearing from him today. And uh, we're just going to be praying for William and Reverend Sarah and everybody who's down with something or other. This kind of seems like the season of our discontent, but everything on earth changes and it's all gonna be better and better. So Victoria and I are going to actually tag team on the opening today. And we have a topic that we'd love to share with you. And then we'll lead right into our service. And I just wanna first welcome you here to the Compassion Consortium. I think many of you know, if, you, if this is not your first time here, we are a gathering of a spiritual gathering and a spiritual community for uh, those who love animals and who want to include interspecies we call it interspecies spirituality into your spiritual practice. So welcome, you're at the right place. We're so glad you're here. And Victoria, tee us up with our topic for uh, today's opening. Yeah, we're really talking about this new year. And I think we've been disappointed the last couple of years. You know, 2020 was not a year to write home about. So we were all waiting for 2021. And, you know, one could say it was disappointing. <laughs> 2022 hasn't quite come into its own yet, but one of the coolest things about this early part of the year is that we have the opportunity to start over often. So we have the newness of, of the new year, and now coming up February 1st is Chinese New Year, which is going to be Year of the Tiger. And I'm not an expert on Chinese astrology, but somebody told me that 2020 was year of the rat. Now I love rats and, and Jonathan Balcom, uh, animal behaviorist says that, that rats are known to have a moral sense and that they will do the moral thing for other rats and other beings. But in Chinese astrology, the year of the rat is not great. <laughs> it's about disease and kind of trickery and stuff like that. And then 2021 was year of the ox, which is like good for the stock market, you know, kind of bull market and some of that, you know, big stuff outside. But it's, it's not warm and fuzzy and comforting and giving you what you expected. Year of the tiger, however, is supposed to do that. It's the tigers are great protector. So uh, why not? Beautiful. So what we want to open up for you today, being that it's January, is new beginnings. And as, as Victoria mentioned, we have multiple opportunities here at the beginning of the year for new beginnings. I know sometimes we put a lot of pressure on that whole uh, 
New Year's Eve, right? Like that's it, the new beginning. And if you set one of those resolutions or maybe a few, and if here it is January 23rd and you're, you've already messed up all of them, what we wanna offer you is the possibility of a few other new beginnings and maybe some, um, some strategies for that. Absolutely. What I'd like to share, and yeah, and, and what I'd like to share is actually um, one of my favorite spiritual teachers and most influential spiritual teachers passed away this weekend. If anyone knows Thich Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese Buddhist um, monk and peace advocate and um, bodhisattva, we um, we lost him in this this, this particular physical form over the weekend. I think it was very auspicious that he passed away literally at midnight in Vietnam time. I think that that takes that takes a certain level of spiritual um, awareness to be able to go out in such <laughs> in such precision. Um, but one of the practices from from that tradition, from the Plum Village tradition or the tradition of engaged Buddhism, is a practice called beginning anew. And it was one of the takeaways that I really got from Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, beginning anew is a way that no matter where you are in the year, you can reset. You can reset a relationship. You can reset whatever's going on in your life. And there's actually a process for it. But the concept is, and, and the way I've seen it used most is in relationship practices. You can say, you know, every Sunday we're going to have a beginning anew ritual um, in, our, in our relationship. And the way that that would work is you would come together and you first do something called watering the seeds. It's a reminder of beginner's mind, which is a bit about what we're talking about here with beginnings. Beginner's mind is, you know, I may not have this situation right. What I might be upset about or holding grievances about, I might not quite have all the, all the facts right. I might be filtering that through my own perception. And so watering the seeds is a first way to, to speak positivity into another person, to water the seeds within another person that are, that are wholesome and that are positive and that are lovely and kind. And if you water those seeds, just like any garden, the seeds you water are the ones that grow. So within us, we have all of the seeds and um, the ones we water are the ones that will grow more. So the more we can choose to water the seeds in someone else of things that are, um, you know, compassion, patience, kindness, all of those amazing things. So you would water those seeds in someone else before you even begin the practice. You would compliment them or you would, you would say how much you appreciate or honor and respect something about uh -huh. them. It's beautiful. And then you would actually go into saying, and now I need to share something that has been on my heart. And you're then able to share something that maybe you've been holding that you would like to be free of, that you'd like to be released from as a way of just saying, I don't want to keep carrying this with me into the next week of our relationship. I'd like to put this down. So I'd like to air this now and ask for what I need. And both parties are able to do that. So Victoria. That's that sounds like Thich Nhat Hanh, <laughs> what a guy. And vegan, for anybody who didn't know that, you know, a lot of our wonderful spiritual teachers are wonderful, but they don't get that piece. Thich Nhat Hanh got that piece too. So my first introduction to him was, I think his very first book, The Miracle of Mindfulness. And I remember one phrase where he said, mindfulness means that you wash the teapot as if you were giving the baby Buddha or Jesus a bath. That's a keeper. I love that, that amount of presence. And that's a great way to go into the new year. How, how can we be that present in our everyday life and everything we do? That present, that, that loving, that aware that this life, it's kind of like an extended working vacation. And I think it's, it's hard to, you know, get our minds around, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, I may be closer to the end of the tour than I thought, but it just makes every day precious. And that's so hard when things are just, just rotten. Just like, you know, you can look at what's going on in your life and say, this isn't working and this isn't working, this isn't working. But one of my wonderful friends who's actually going to be uh, our, our special guest coming up in, I don't know, April or May, we're scheduled with amazing people so far out but she was saying oh don't worry when when things in life don't go right they're not supposed to so I kind of uh, carry that one tongue-in-cheek too I'm sure William and Sarah are, are uh, internalizing that one right now <laughs> so Thanks. just in case your New Year's Eve or New Year's resolutions have already uh, gone amiss no worries you've got the Chinese New Year coming up the year of the tiger is, is upon us you can start start anew then and if that doesn't work, we've got the spring equinox coming up, another chance to plant new seeds and begin anew. And we have before the spring equinox, I have to get in a plug for March 4th. That is the day when we are invited to March 4th. 
<laughs> into the rest of the year and the rest of our lives. So all of nature, even the calendar is inviting us into newness. Beautiful. So treat yourself with compassion and allow yourself some space to continue beginning anew every day in every way. And here we are. And a our person coming up who's going to be reading our tenants is doing something new. Uh, we met Sandy Nasanowitz a couple of months ago when she was our compassion in action person talking about her memoir, Oblivious. But she is now a new contributing writer to medium.com. Very cool, very cool. Uh, so, Sandy, thanks so much for reading the tenants today. I am totally honored to read these tenants. So, I'll start. We acknowledge a divine force at the heart of the universe and in all living beings. We may, we may refer to this force as God, but it is known by many names and appears in different forms or as formless. We recognize the common moral principles inherent within all wisdom traditions. We affirm that compassion, reverence for life, and nonviolence are fundamental to religious faith and moral philosophy and are to be extended to all sentient beings. We stand by the principles of inclusion, diversity, and equality and hold these as essential in our human relations. We hold that non-human animals are imbued with the same essence of life and love as our human animals, and that there is moral parity between us. We avow that humans do not own the earth, its resources or its inhabitants, but instead must be involved in their protection and care. We endeavor to eat and live in a kind and sustainable manner, moving away from animal foods and animal derived clothing, as well as any activities that cause harm to our fellow beings, human or otherwise. We aim to provide spiritual comfort, fellowship and food for thought to those practicing or exploring a vegan lifestyle. We offer guidance and peer support for all those seeking a more compassionate and spiritual life. And we commit to sharing these principles freely with humility and respect in support of non-human animals and the earth. Thank you, Sandy. Beautiful, thank you, Sandy. And just seeing the words on the screen reminded me that one of my duties of today is to tell you that there is a new Zoom feature. If you don't know it, it's called a live transcript. And you might see it at the bottom of your screen in the bar that has all the options. Um, there's a button there that says live transcript. And we have a new feature enabled on our end that means if you turn that on, if you click on the live transcript button and you click the button that says show subtitles, you'll actually get this entire service captioned at the bottom of your screen. So if you'd like to be able to follow along with more words, not just the tenants that we show in words, um, we're, you are invited to do so. It is time for a spiritual practice. Everybody ready for a spiritual practice? Thumbs up for a spiritual practice. Little, little hand waves. All right. So today we're going to be uh, dropping into the practice of a metta meditation. This does come from the Buddhist tradition. And uh, metta is a word meaning loving kindness. And people often use metta meditations as a tool for expanding compassion. And so being that we are the Compassion Consortium, it seems appropriate that um, we're working on these as, on such things. So I would love to invite you now. Um, Phil's going to pull up a video. I will tell you I'm visiting uh, my family in Texas right now, which I will mention later when we do our land acknowledgement in our prayers and our blessings. Um, but the cats that you will see featured in this video today come from the companion animals of my sister who lives here. So um, what I'm gonna invite you to do as Phil's pulling up this video, is to just find a comfortable seat. This is going to be a meditation. I'm going to be guiding it and uh, we'll be, you know, it'll be seven ish minutes, so it won't be too long. And I'll just guide you through a few circles of compassion that you'll be able to bring some awareness to. And we're going to use what's called a mantra or 
um, a, a wish, a wish for loving kindness for, for ourselves and for others. And um, we'll repeat this as we go through the practice. So just follow along. You'll hear some music lightly in the background. That's Max. So just finding a comfortable position, taking a few breaths, allowing the breath to just drop you into your body, in drop you into this present moment. We are home in the light. Letting the breath fill the belly. The breath fill the lungs. And as we're here, slowly dropping in to breath, just begin to bring awareness to your own self. Maybe feel into your heart. Some people will actually put their hand over their heart just to give a physical anchor. And just as you're feeling into your heart and just thinking about yourself, and who you are in the world. Offer yourself a wish, a blessing, and just gently wish for yourself, may I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be at peace. And just really let those wishes land for yourself. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be at peace. Just take a few breaths into your heart as you allow that wish to amplify and expand. Now bring into your awareness someone who's close to you. Someone that you feel a real fondness to. A loved one of some kind or just someone that when you think of them, it brings your, it brings your heart joy. Just really bring that person into your awareness and focus your full attention and awareness on that person or, or being. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a non-human being. And that's fabulous as well. And then just offer the same blessing. May this be, be happy. May this being be free. May this being be well. May this being be at peace. Just really let that expand in your heart. May they be happy. May they be free and safe. May they be well and healthy. And may they be at peace. And then just gently let that person go out of your awareness or that being go out of your awareness. And now bring in a being who is neutral to you. You don't feel particularly fond of them, but you also don't feel particularly uh, not fond of them. Just someone who's a neutral person or a neutral being of any kind in your life. Could be someone you just passed on the street, someone who a cashier who checked out your last grocery purchase. Just really bring in to your heart awareness of this being. Maybe an animal you saw a picture of from a sanctuary. Just send a blessing to this being. May you be happy. 
May you be free. May you be well and healthy. May you be at peace. Just feeling your heart expand and well wishes for this being. May you be happy. May you be free. May you be at peace. And then allow that being to go. Now one more. This time, bring someone into your awareness who you were challenged by. Maybe somebody you know closely that you struggle in relationship with. In this community, it may very well be those who have not awakened to considering all beings in their compassion practices. And just offer the same blessing to this being. May you be happy. May you be free. May you be well. May you be at peace. And just really let that sit in your heart for a moment. Feeling any struggles and challenges around this. Just expand a little bit. They don't have to disappear, but maybe you get a little bit more space. May this being be happy. May they be well. May they be free. May they be at peace. And then allow them to slowly drift out of your awareness. And begin to come back to our group here, to our gathering, thanking yourself for this practice, for spending the time expanding your compassion in this way, and just feeling the gratitude that we could all share that moment together. Thank you all. And now I'll turn it over to Victoria for our guest interview. Okay, cool. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. I have wanted to talk to this woman in this context for such a long time, because I'm a fan. Kathy Freston is a New York Times bestselling author, a health and wellness ad activist, and an advocate for animals. And I would just be so much stronger than advocate. I think she would jump off a building if it could <laughs> save animals. Her latest book is 72 Reasons to be Vegan. And I just want to tell you, Kathy, how I first came to know that you existed on this planet at the same time as me. I was visiting a friend over in Hell's Kitchen. And just as I was leaving, she had the TV on and the Oprah show was on. And you were there, I believe it was your first appearance with Quantum Wellness. She didn't even have the sound on. I don't know what you were talking about, but your presence, your being, not just because you're beautiful to look at, but because you have a beautiful soul, sort of exited the TV. It was like it filled the room. And there was a thing on the Chiron that had your name. And then I went home and read about you. So, um, oh, gosh, it's good to be talking to you. Welcome to the thank you. To the show. Thank you. Thank you for that. That is really, really kind of you. Thank you. Well, the reason that I just know everybody here is going to be so interested in hearing from you is that you bring your spirit into your animal activism. You are a health vegan, as well as an ethical vegan. You're really somebody who ties it all together. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit of your story, how you started out and how you got here. Well, so I did not ever aim in my life to become a vegan advocate or activist or anything like that. And I grew up in the South in Georgia, Doraville, Georgia. And if you would have told me, A, that I would not eat anything from an animal, uh, you know, when I grew up, I'd be like, what? And then that I would devote my life to it. I, I would just think you're from another planet. So it just wasn't in my um, awareness at all. And so I started off my writing career, writing about sort of how to be more awake and aware in relationships, how to have more conscious communication, how to be more intentional 
in your relationships and to bring spirituality into the relationship and actually bring, uh, create the relationship out of spirituality, not a formal religion, but just in a place of um, being connected, um, trying to constantly raise the vibration and come from a place of soul and heart and kindness and all of that stuff. So I had written a couple of books about relationships and I, um, I, I had diet for a new America by John Robbins on my bedside for many years. And I had cracked it open from time to time and slammed it shut because it was so disturbing. I don't know if you remember that book, but he's, you know, John Robbins is, is one of the OGs of this incredibly compassionate movement. And it was just, it was too much. It was an inconvenient truth that I did not, I did not know how to even, you know, be with. So I, I closed it. Um, so that, but that was always in the back of my mind. And then cut to, I had received a pamphlet in the mail. This is probably 18 years ago or something. I received a pamphlet in the mail uh, from some animal organization and it showed a cow being dragged to slaughter. And don't worry, I'm not going to traumatize anyone with any details, but it so jarred me that I was like, you know, it was a cow being dragged. It was probably a dairy cow because when they're finished producing dairy, they're obviously worn out and, you know, they're going to be used for their meat. And um, so that was also in the back of my mind. And one day I was just playing with my dog, Lotsi, a little chihuahua, and I was rubbing her belly. She was on her back and she was kicking her, you know, her legs out. And I said, oh, I love this dog so much. I love animals so much. And this voice inside of my head, which I feel like is the voice of spirit, the voice of consciousness, the voice of my higher power, whatever you want to call it. But for me, it's a voice that I recognize and I listen to. And it said, well, if you love animals so much, why are you eating them? And that Victoria was really upsetting to me because I kind of thought of myself as a conscious person, as someone who was awake and aware, but, um, I just realized I'm like, I'm a girl from the South. I love my barbecue ribs. I love, you know, burgers on the weekend. I love steak on the grill. I mean, I, I was kind of, you know, had that bravado of, yeah, give me some sausage. And, you know, I, I just, it just didn't jar. And I, and I, I didn't know what to do about it. So I, I did a thought experiment and I pictured Lotsi, my little dog, as if she were a food animal, you know, maybe she was a chicken. Maybe she was a, oops, sorry. That was my alarm. Um, maybe she was a chicken. Maybe she was a lamb, whatever. And I pictured her in the line going towards slaughter and it just blew away. Cause I thought I would you're right. I would lay down my life, you know, to, rather than have this animal who I knew and loved. I knew her intimately. I knew what made her afraid. I knew who she liked, who she didn't, when she was anxious and why I had a real relationship with this animal. And I would do anything to, you know, not have her suffer. I didn't even like leaving the house <laughs> for very long because I knew she would suffer, you know? And so if I felt that way about my dog. How could I just be in partnership with these, you know, animal food producers? Like, how could I, I, I was doing the same thing to the cow, to the pig, to the um, chicken, to the lamb. And so I just challenged myself. I thought, I don't want to be somebody who eats animals. I just don't want to be somebody. I don't know how I'm going to get there but this is my intention. I'm going to hold this intention and I'm going to explore ways that I can lean into being the person that I want to be. And that's what started me on my journey. And you wrote a book called The Lean, which mm -hmm. talks about looking at this way of life and, and just coming a little bit closer. Maybe you don't have to dive off the high dive the first day. Tell us about that concept. 
Well, for me, I, if you had told me stop eating animals, I would have been like, I would have shut down. I couldn't have done it. You know, it was just, it was foreign territory to me. This was so, you know, yes, there were vegans out there. There were vegetarians out there. I didn't really know any, I might've known a vegetarian or two, but I certainly didn't. Um, I didn't hang with them. It wasn't my, you know, social group. I, I, I just, so I thought, um, and this is why I have a lot of compassion for people who shut down because it's, it's, we numb out and we disconnect because we have to, right? And so if I thought I had to stop eating animals just like that, I would have failed. I would have gone back numb. I would have disconnected the dots again and I would have given up. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna cut myself some slack and I'm just going to find my way. And it was so effective for me because I took the pressure off. And I feel like we're, you know, there's, I'm not so different from anybody else. And I think that if people are, you know, given the space to sort of, and dignity and respect that given the right information and the kindness and compassion toward them, people are gonna find their way toward this because um, it, it just makes sense, right? And so rather than shaming, if someone came to me and shamed me and, and tried to force me to, to be this way, um, I just wouldn't have done it. And I get it about activists. I so get it because when I first went was 100% vegan, I was like, I wanted to shout it from the rooftops. I wanted to clobber someone over the head if I saw them eating lamb chops at the table next to me. I wanted to like scream at them. Don't you see what you're doing? But as a practical person, I have to think, we all have to think like, what would work with me if, if someone were trying to bring some awareness to me would shaming and clobbering over the head work? No. Would would kindness and gentle information and just sort of like an, an opening up the door, opening up the tent and welcome me in work? Yes, that would work. And so that's what I try to do with a lean in philosophy. And how do you do that today, Kathy? I know you write your books, but what else, what, what makes you an activist and advocate? What does that look like? Well, uh, what makes me an actor, I, I continue to write, um, you know, my co-author Jean and I just wrote this book about the 72 reasons to be vegan. So that's, and I try to keep it light. I, I do, I, I'm very active on Instagram and sometimes I get beaten up on Instagram because I'm not hardcore. Um, and when I say I'm not hardcore, that doesn't mean I'm like, yeah, I'll have chicken every once in a while. No, it means that I'm not going to shame someone. I want, I want it to be a bigger and bigger tent. You know what I mean? I don't want, I, I, I don't want to be a member of the tribe. Sometimes people say, yeah, we're the vegan tribe or whatever. It's like, no, nah, tribalism has gotten us nowhere good. <laughs> I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in the tribe. So I'd rather, um, I'd rather hang out with people who are comfortable um, eating whatever they want around me and that we can respect each other. And maybe there's an openness for me to see what motivates and animates them. And maybe they can see what motivates and animates me. And so I write about that on Instagram. I write about my own struggles, my own um, flaws, you know, that I'm not perfect. Um, I have an old pair of Uggs from 20 years ago. I wear them like slippers in the house and, you know, the hardcore people beat me up for that. But you know what? It's like, it's like, let's give people the space to be humans doing the very best that we can with heart and with soul and with connectedness with each other. And so that's how I, I try to remain an advocate and activist. No, oh, that's beautiful. I think in the teenage world, there's this concept of, of mean girls. And I think in the adult world, there's this concept of mean people online. It's like yes. people who would be pretty kind and polite in real life. It's funny, isn't it? It's really, it's really strange. I don't, I don't understand it. It's like um, 
do you not think we have feelings? Do you not think that people are going to read the comments? And I have a very thick skin because I've been doing this for a long time. And I wrote a lot of blogs and I got a lot of tomatoes thrown at me through, you know, the airwaves. But so I have a thick skin, but sometimes people take a low blow and I, and I just don't understand it. But I just know that resistance is a funny thing. You know, we we resist in ways that um, feel self-protective. So I, I try to, I have a lot of compassion for animals and I also want to have a lot of compassion for humans <laughs> because humans are complex and we're all doing the best that we can. Yeah, that's for sure. So Kathy, you live a really sophisticated life. I mean, you're out there in LA and you've lived in New York mm -hmm. and Oprah would take your calls. So what's it like to have this heart for animals out there in the pretty glittery big world? Well, um, it's interesting because it has changed a lot in the last 18 years. I mean, it's normalized now. I think when I used to go to someone's house or meet people for a restaurant, I was very almost apologetic. Like, I'm, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm vegan and let me, you know, don't want you to go to any trouble now. It's like, oh, she's vegan. Okay. And uh, it's just, it's just sort of, it's normalized. I mean, restaurants tend to carry at least one vegan option. And if I call a host back in the days when I used to go to dinner parties pre-pandemic, but um, hopefully one day again soon, but um I, I, I would just call and say, Hey, I'm vegan. If you want me to bring something to uh, dinner, so you don't have to worry about it. And they're like, Oh no, we've got, we've got that covered. So it's, it's just normalized now it's very, and it's so much easier than it was. Here's another thing that really bugged me, Victoria is when, um, and I was guilty of it too, you know, and uh, is that a, a lot of vegans, we want to just, because we're so desperate for people not to hurt the animals. So we're like, it's so easy. And it's like, it's not that easy. You know, if you're not living in New York or Los Angeles 15 years ago, it's easier now. It's easier in pretty much every medium and large city. And even in the small cities, I love exploring, you know, where you can eat and it's, but I don't want to say to someone it's easy because, um, it's, it's, it's your entire life. You've been eating one way, which is meat, cheese, eggs. And so it's different. It's just finding your own way. And, um, so, but that's changed. It's just, it's just gotten better now. Yeah. So is being vegan, is being someone who has a heart for animals part of your spiritual life? It's actually the cornerstone of my spiritual life because it, um, like the story I just told, it taught me sacrifice. You know, I loved ribs. I, I had this cute little fur collar that I loved that I thought was very chic. Um, I loved Jimmy Choo's shoes. <laughs> I mean, it was much easier for me to get, you know, the steak out of my life than it was than the, the fabulous shoes that I loved. And it taught me that, um, that following my my compassion, my spiritual um, values, such as mercy um, and being a responsible steward and kindness, those were more valuable and they made me feel better as a person. They practicing my values and they're pretty basic, you know, compassion, kindness, kindness, mercy, um, responsible stewardship, that they're pretty broad values. They're not like very niche, right? But practicing them through giving up eating and exploiting animals for food or fashion, then I got to practice being the person that I wanted to be. And I'm still not the person that I want to be. I'm still aiming higher and higher and more evolved and deeper and more expanded and all those things. But practicing my values uh, around this, around veganism has allowed me to become the person that I hoped to be oh, wow. or closer anyway. So Kathy, tell us about your day. And I know nobody's day is really typical, but mm. as a spiritual person, as an animal advocate, as a proponent of high level health, 
What time mm -hmm. do you get up in the morning? What do you eat for breakfast? <laughs> um, yeah, the basics. <laughs> the basics. Yeah. Well, first of all, I um, pretty much live to eat. I love to eat. I'm never going to be one of those people who does the intermittent fasting. I just there's for me. I get a, I'm like, oh my god, it's it's morning. What am I going to have for breakfast? So I usually get up before the sunrise, uh, or in the summertime, maybe a little bit later. But I get up before the sunrise so I can watch it uh, come up. And I have some tea and then I have breakfast this morning. I had yogurt with uh, fresh raspberries and some granola. Um, and whenever I say yogurt or whatever, it's all non-dairy. Everything I eat, whether it's butter or cheese or whatever, it's, it's just the non-animal version of it. So I had the yogurt and uh, raspberries. And then I, because it's a weekend, I took a bike ride this morning, which I think I was trying to text you while, you know, I was like, am I supposed to be there? So I did, um, I did 25 miles today. I did, uh, but I tend to do like, yeah, I tend to do anywhere from 25 to 45 miles on a weekend day. And then during the week I run five miles a day and that's just, it feels like, I don't know. It's just, it feels like I want to experience my health and that's the best way that I know how to experience my health. Um, so then I come home, get showered, answer emails, and then I work not on the weekends, not on Sunday, not on Saturday. Um, but then I just start writing. I start, I start doing my thing and I, I work for about, you know, the rest of the afternoon and, and I'm personally, a big lover of happy hour. So I, you know, have a glass of wine at the end of the day and some cheese and crackers and, you know, get to cooking dinner. And so it's, it's kind of basic tonight. Let's see, what am I going to have? So, uh, tonight I'm going to make, um, some bolognese made with mushrooms and cauliflower. And I'm going to use uh, the bonza pasta, which is sweet potatoes. So it's loaded with pro no chickpea, which is loaded with protein. And, uh, yeah, and that's my day. Very simple, very enjoyable. Oh, that sounds so good. Well, now you've inspired me because I have some bonzo pasta and I haven't tried it yet. Oh, so, so good. I promise. Yeah, it's really good. You don't even know it's not regular old white pasta and it's per serving. I think it's 23 grams of protein. So I like, I like getting a vegetable, a protein. And I mean, I'm kind of basic. I'm always sort of in my head. Did you get some fresh vegetables at this meal? Did you get some good protein? Did you get some, you know, unrefined carbs? So um, again, I keep it pretty basic. Yeah. So your latest book, the 72 reasons to be vegan, tell us your favorite reason or maybe your favorite mm -hmm. two or three. <laughs> Okay. Well, um, because I am into health, the first reason is that you hugely reduce your chances of getting heart disease, certain types of cancer, type two diabetes, stroke, dementia. Um, you know, I've seen members of my family really pretty much have every one of those, not Alzheimer's. Um, but it's pretty motivated. So, so Jean and I really break down um, the, the studies. It's a very simple book. It's like the, the, the chapters and the sections are very small, but we, we give great citations and we keep it light and lively uh, because we don't want to overwhelm people with like so much information, but you know, we give you a path to find more if you're interested. And um, so that's one of my favorite reasons. The other reason uh, is that it is cheaper and easier than buying a new Tesla <laughs> because it's great for the environment. Um, eating animal food is just so hard on our earth, so hard on our soil, on our water, um, on the air that we breathe, that creates climate change gases. So uh, yes, if you can afford to buy a Tesla, that's a beautiful thing and it will make a difference, but changing the way you eat, moving away from eating animals and toward plant-based is just a huge individual choice that makes, makes a big difference. And then the last choice, the la one of the last reasons that I, I so love it is that it's such a relationship builder. Because I think, you know, we were talking before about that numbness when you, um, when you unnumb yourself basically, and you connect the dots, you feel more deeply 
you're like, you're more relational, you're more open, you, your heart space is open. So not only am I feeling for animals and I'm feeling for like this connectedness with the, with everything, but I'm able to really connect with people. And I think a much deeper and more expansive way. So relationships really improve. And I think it's super hot, you know, when men are like that. So, um, <laughs> You know, I, I just think it's a great way to feel and relate in your life. Beautiful. And and this is a great book too, uh, 72 Reasons to Be Vegan, to give to these people that are just kind of veg curious. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not, not intimidating. So Kathy, this always goes so quickly, but last question, and this actually is going to be the question that we'll suggest for our breakout groups after the service. What are you hopeful for this year? Oh, wow. What am I hopeful for this year? Um, well, I'm hopeful for so many things. Um, I am just hopeful for all these companies that are plant-based, like Impossible, Hungry Planet, um, uh, Beyond Meat. I'm just so hopeful that they become more and more ubiquitous because not everybody wants the rice and beans and broccoli. A lot of people want a freaking burger and some sausage, and this is a way to have everything you want. So I am hopeful that these companies just thrive and do better and better and end up in everyone's kitchen. Uh Beautiful. So uh, Kathy is everywhere. You can find her on Instagram at Kathy Freston. Her website is kathyfreston.com. And she just has books and books and books about health and animals and nutrition. And she collaborated on one clean protein with our very first uh, Compassion Consortium guest, Bruce Friedrich, who uh, kicked things off when he was our first guest last April. So thank you, Kathy, so, so very much for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you. I love, love, love being part of this compassionate conversation. It's great. So, well, we're very proud of what we do here. It's just one in a strand. You know, we're all kind of weaving and what we're going to build is a compassionate world. And thank you so much yeah. for being such a great weaver. Thank you. And turning it over to Reverend Erica. So fun. Thank you both so much. And Kathy, you called me out. I'm a big intermittent faster. So uh, we might have a hard time having lunch together, but I, I love everything you said. It's been so nice meeting you. Um, all right. So waving to Kathy. Um, so we are now going to move into that part where we're actually going to move into that part. This is we've been in, we've been sitting and listening for almost an hour here. So I always like to give a few moments for us to check in with our bodies, see what needs to be stretched or moved or wiggled or shaken just check in with yourself do you need to adjust in any way maybe give your shoulders a little roll if you've been kind of fixated if you if you've been uh, captivated by kathy's beauty and leaning into the screen just give your give your shoulders a little roll and your neck a little stretch sometimes during this section i like to imagine my favorite animal friends and what would they be doing right now maybe stretching your wings out or i don't know leaning over one way or another, leaning forward, just really let your body have some attention and whatever feels really good, do that. We're moving into our, our compassion in action section. So if you're feeling good now, your body's got a little bit of rejuvenation. I'm very uh, excited to introduce you to uh, John. Now, Badass Vegan is his handle, and I've been dying to say that live in a spiritual service, in any spiritual service. So I had my moment today, Badass Vegan. So I want to introduce John. We're going to play a trailer of the movie that he just made, and then we're going to have a, a, a small Q&A with John. So let me start with his bio. So John Lewis is a well-renowned fitness expert. He is the, the creator of BadassVegan.com, and he has spent over two decades in the health and fitness industry. He played Division I college basketball, and he is highly passionate about not only his own health and fitness, but that of others as well. And that is evident through his motivational messages, both through his international public speaking engagements and through his social media outlets. Now, the movie trailer we're about to watch is for the movie he just made called They're Trying to Kill Us. And we will, uh, let's everybody give John a wave. We'll, we'll bring him on in a second, but let's play that trailer first so that we can, uh, we can all be on the same page before we chat with John.
So this is the neighborhood I grew up in, right in Ferguson. A friend of mine was actually shot in his driveway right there. You put drugs in the communities, put guns in the communities, you put disease in the communities, put poor food in the communities. All these things are designed to shorten your life expectancy. It's by design. It is not accidental that this is what's in the hood and this is what's over there. There's actually an active hand in making sure that we are living like this. It's all about control, money, and survival to them. Your death is not an expense to them. It's an expense to you. They're trying to make money from us, even if it's at the expense of killing us. You just die slow. Your family just watches you die. The alcohol industry, fast food industry, tobacco industries target communities of color. Your health is not their main priority. They're trying to keep you sick. We are in a state of emergency when it comes to our health. Keeping people sick is very lucrative. Now you want pills. Now you want dialysis. Now you want medicine. You go into the hospital on a regular to see your doctor. Everybody's getting paid except you. Big pharma and pharmaceutical companies are making billions of dollars off of all of us. As long as they can make that dollar, they don't care if you live or die. There's something about being here that's making black people sick. Everybody's getting paid, except you. You hurt me. There are more dangerous and harmful chemicals and products made for women of color. It absolutely is a crisis. They don't make a dime if you're healthy. It's kind of like the dope gang. It is the dope gang. It's just a bigger gangster, the mob boss. You look at the hidden hand, you see that government is feeding the crisis. We're fed wrong knowledge, decided all the wrong food. It's about money over people's health. If you can control a population's access to food, you can control the person. Only about 8% of African Americans even live in communities that have a grocery store in them. Because the deep root problem is the food. Because poor diets kill more brothers than pistols. You know, we fighting for our lives. That's like Michael Bick's pit bulls. As black men. We're dying off so quickly in so many ways. It's here, pocketed in our communities. We don't want a healthy population. That is injustice, plain and simple. The powers that be that are making that money at the top, they trying to kill us. Woo, that is so powerful. John, thank you so much for being here. Talk to us. Give us a little bit about this movie. Like, What's the inspiration? How did this come to be? Uh, yes. Hello, everybody. Oh, everybody can hear me. I hope everybody can hear me. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, the inspiration was just living in a community, watching my family be sick, watch my community be sick, watch the world be sick and realizing how a certain lifestyle helped me change my life, uh, which is veganism and this, the negative stereotypes that were around veganism and watching how the people with all the money that promoted this meat and dairy and eggs and all this, how they just basically were like the puppet masters with the strings, making you think that if you don't eat this meat, you're going to die. And I, I, I used to do a, all my speeches. I used to call it vegans aren't filling up the hospitals. And it's, and I always say, you can go to any hospital anywhere in the world. I don't care if it's the richest country, third world country, whatever it is. If you start asking all the patients, whether they eat on a daily basis, the majority is not going to say, oh, we eat nothing but plants. But for some reason, we've been brainwashed. Even me, I was a butcher at one point in my life. I, I'm very open about that. Like, even me, I was brainwashed to think that, oh, man, if I don't have meat and, and animals and dead, you know, bodies on my plate, then, ah, then I'm going to die. And it's the opposite, actually. So I wanted to just spread that message and, and show people the truth. So, so inspirational. This section, we're going to be talking to you in another segment in a few weeks. And so we're going to go way deep with you then. But just for today, this section is compassion in action. So how did you know that you could, like, you were, you were, you were passionate about this thing. How did you know that you could, like, make a video and get the word out? Like, how did that happen? I, I have been very graced that my mom has always been my number one supporter, like no matter what it was, you want to be an astronaut? Well, if you want to be an astronaut, it's going to take you this, 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 and this, but you can do it. Just know the work you got to do it. So I just always felt like, yeah, it was a nervous, <laughs> I'm not going to say that I was like, oh yeah, I got this, but I, I knew that if I did the work and teamed up with the right people, then this had no chance, no choice but to happen. I, I look at everything like fitness. I really do. Like if you put in the work, the results will come. So I just like, if I keep doing the work, 
and I've always practiced and um, done smaller films myself. If you see my Instagram page, I'm always editing and doing smaller things. I was like, well, it's time to step up and go big now. So that's what it was. From Instagram video to the mainstream. This is amazing. Um, so I'm just going to end with the last question that Victoria also asked to Kathy. What are you most hopeful for for this year? I'm, I'm more hope. I'm the most hopeful for people believing in their power. I think that's where the change comes. I think we've been, again, I use the word brainwash a lot because that's literally what they, they practice on. I, I got my undergrad degree in marketing and I never forget when I graduated my, uh, my teacher, I went to a smaller uh, historically black school and, and the teacher, I had her for a lot of marketing classes. And as we're graduating, she goes, well, good luck everybody. You know, it's kind of tough to find a job out there. And we're all like, well, you could have told us this before we choose, chose this as a major, but okay. But she started telling us how that a lot of these companies, now mind you, I graduated college in 21, 2020, I'm, I'm sorry, 2001. And so back 20 years ago, she was telling us then that these companies were, weren't hiring marketers, they were hiring psychologists. They were hiring people to understand the mind of people. So basically when you watch that commercial and the steam starts to rise off of the cheese at 15 seconds, they know your attention span. When you start to see you know, the sauce dripping from it at 25 seconds, they know your attention span. So it's all about psychology and understanding the brainwashing of that. That's what it is. So I want people to understand how powerful they are and realize no matter what somebody tries to sell you, it doesn't mean you have to buy it. Mm. Amazing. So powerful. Well, thank you for being here today. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're going to announce this at the end of the show, but at the end of today, but we're going to be able to talk a lot more with John when he comes back for our film night. We're going to see, yes. we're going to talk more. We, we won't get to see a screening of the video at that moment, but we'll make sure we know. Not how yet. Can Not yet. Yeah. We're still oh, working yeah. on distribution. Uh, we've, okay. we've had some interest now. We did like a two week online, uh, screener which went pretty well but now we've gotten some interest from some uh some networks and platforms so hopefully soon we get it out to the public is there any way anyone in this like how can we help is there anything we can do to help all, all of us who are listening right now if you know somebody at the head of any of these networks call them <laughs> and like all hey right. i got this amazing film uh i've had some people reach out to me mad like i didn't get it in the two weeks i was like well we said two weeks we're only doing two weeks for the screening but you know how people are they like to wait till the last minute or a month after the last minute to get upset and we're like well it's two weeks we told you so um yeah right. anybody can reach out to these networks you know it, it's just like a store if you go to a store and you don't find the product you like if you keep telling that story you want this product eventually they're going to listen if enough people say it so just keep keep the buzz going and, and i'm sure it's going to all work out Amazing. Thanks, John. And we look forward to talking to you again in a few weeks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody have a good one. Bye. Awesome. Well, we're honing in on our end of service here. We're going to go to our prayers and blessings section. So normally Rev Sarah leads this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my best to fill in her shoes as I've been trying to do most of today. Um, what I'm going to invite you to do is in the chat over here, this is our interactive part of the service. So if you have something that you'd like us to collectively pray for, you're gonna be able to use the chat field to write that in and I'll give some prompts during our, during our blessing of what we're looking for, but it'll be you know, people that you'd like to, uh, to, to pray for because they are sick or in need of help. And then also things that you wanna celebrate and are feeling joyful about that we can amplify in our prayer field. So uh, the kind of prayer that I would like to lead us in is actually a prayer field type of a prayer. And what that means is it's basically that we are going to come together collectively, build our energy into a grid. And this grid is then going to allow whatever we put into it to amplify and go out into the world with even more power than each of our individual prayers and requests and, and blessings and wishes will. So I would love to, um, to lead you along with me in that. All right, so just uh, inviting you again to find your, find your center, find your ground, and just bring your awareness in. Find that place, that, uh, that inner room, as some traditions call it, where you commune with divinity. And find that space, find that silence, and go there for a moment. Find the sacredness of that. Find the longing that lives there, the longing in your heart for 
connection to the source, longing in your heart to fulfill your deepest desires because that is what gives you purpose and fulfillment in the world. And we're gonna now connect that spot within ourselves with that spot with everyone else here on the call. So just in your mind's eye, just begin to bring your awareness to the fact that there are 70, 65 other people at this moment on this call that are all right now in their sacred space of prayer and intention. And just begin to energetically connect with each of those other beings on this call. And then bring into this prayer field any non-human beings that you'd also like to be in our field with us today. Just feeling the grid that we're making, the, the connections between hearts and feel Feel the space that this is taking up. Feel the, the frequency that we're creating. And know that this field that we're making is a force field. It's a force field of good, of, of desire, of intention. And in this field, we can put in our requests and we can put in our gratitudes and all of it will be amplified. And so in this moment, now that we have this prayer field built amongst our community, I'm just gonna invite you to begin to add in to the chat or just even in your mind's eye, um, anything that you would like to pray for anyone or anything who is, is suffering or in pain or has passed that you'd like to drop into the prayer field, anyone you'd like to keep our collective energy surrounding at this time. And I'm just gonna read a few out as I see them already coming in. Bernie and Barbara, Ellen Boggan, pray for Barbara's dog, Hope, that her ear infection heals without surgery. Praying for Thich Nhat Han, for Rev Sarah and Rev William from the Compassion Consortium. For the departed spirit of Ted Zagger, for Julie's canines PAX adjustment. For the monkeys headed for a lab in Pennsylvania who got in a vehicle collision and tried to escape two days ago. For everyone with cancer and every being with cancer that doesn't know how to cure themselves. For factory farm animals always. For college students, faculty and staff who are beginning a new semester. Another prayer for cancer. Animals that get too cold outside, especially in this season. A prayer for Cindy Funk, who has been set free of the body that failed her too many years ago. All animals that are in misery because of humans. Lisa's mother, she fell and she's in the hospital. The people who say they love animals, but still eat them. Debbie's husband, Jimmy, who is home from the hospital and healing from a bacterial infection. For Carla's cat and the spirit of her dear cat that passed away recently. For friends, uh, Carrie's friends for the past 30 years who are in pain. All the human species to grow in compassion for all the animals that so much, for animals so much that they immediately adopt a vegan lifestyle. Prayers for Angelica who fell and injured her wrist and cut her nose. Sophie the puppy who is dealing with canine cognitive disorder, help to guide her to better health. And for Elizabeth's mom. So we just, in the prayer field now, we just hold and honor those and all of the other blessings and petitions that we have not spoken out loud but that may live on people's hearts in this moment. And for those who do not have anyone to speak for them, we also hold them in our prayer field. And we just open up also this prayer field at this moment, if there are any gratitudes that we'd like to put into this field to have amplified by our collective 
please feel free to also drop those into the chat and we will continue to um, add gratitudes that people are sharing, things people are excited about or grateful for, or happy about. We want to amplify those in our prayer field as well so that we can put our spirits of gratitude, the highest vibration that there is out into the world. Grateful for this service. Thank you, Barbara. Victoria says, Compassion Consortium just got our 501c3 letter from the IRS. So we are definitely feeling gratitude that we'd love to amplify in the prayer field for that. Susan is grateful for the animal activists. Emily is starting first law class tomorrow evening. Congratulations, Emily. And we just continue to amplify all of these things. High vibrations from us from Estrella for uh, to mercy for animals for continued work for compassionate food system if compassionate food systems and solutions for factory farming. Yes, gratitude for mercy for animals and all the other organizations doing fabulous work. The powerful cultural work of indigenous people. Thank you for that. Uh, grateful for this compassion consortium and for all the meditation groups out there, including the meditation group for Winnipeg vegans, for all vegan allies, for the wonderful life and teachings of Thich Nhat Hanh. And I will just take this moment as I'm standing in the land uh, in Texas to give gratitude and thanks for the indigenous peoples who stewarded this land that was taken from them forcefully. This is the Kickapoo peoples, the Wichita peoples, the, Ka the Tawakana people, the Jumanos people, and the Comanches, who are all here on this land that I currently inhabit and stand on today. So gratitude for all of this. And just, again, knowing that this prayer field is always here. It's always here. You can always lean into it. You can always rely on it if you need extra support. In fact, right now, let's all just put in a bless blessing for ourselves. May we take back with us more of that meta meditation for our own peace, our own health, our own happiness and our own freedom and that of all the beings that we love and even those that we are working to strengthen our relationships with. And on that note, we say our final compassionate prayer and I would invite you to join along. It says, it goes like this, may all creatures everywhere be happy and free. May the thoughts, words, and actions of our life contribute to this happiness and this freedom for all. May it be so, amen, and so mote it be. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I'm turning it over to Victoria. She's got some announcements for us and we're gonna head into our wrap up. Okay, so I'm the stand in for William on this. We want to thank everybody for being with us today and let you know about some events coming up on the fourth Sunday of February. That's the 27th. Our special guest will be Milton Mills, MD. Dr. Mills is a wonderful uh, urgent care physician in the Washington DC area. He's also a Seventh-day Adventist, the one Protestant denomination that strongly encourages vegetarianism in its members. So he's gonna talk all about all kinds of fascinating things. You don't wanna miss that. And also uh, the Compassionate Film Talk, which that's happening Tuesday, February 15th, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, Badass Vegan John Lewis will be back with us along with his co-filmmaker, Keegan Kuhn. Now, you know Keegan from Cowspiracy, uh, What the Health, uh, Running for Good. So that's going to be a really, really fascinating night. And it's interactive. So if you were interested in what John had to say today, but you wanted to say, but what about this? And how about that? And what do you think about this? Well, on February 15th, you will get to ask all those questions of John and Keegan. If you enjoyed this service and all our services and you want to support future Compassion Consortium programming, we urge, urge you to donate on our website and uh, Reverend Erica will or has uh, posted the links in the chat box. And as we said, we are now officially tax exempt, which means that any donations you make to the Compassion Consortium are <clears throat> excuse me, are tax deductible for you. And this is effective retroactively. So if you've sent us money from uh, February 13th, when we first started uh, until uh, the uh, 501c3 was approved, you can deduct all of those donations as well. 
back to Reverend Erica. It is that uh, time of the day, night, morning, wherever you happen to be located, that we must say goodbye for the month. We, we do hope to see you again in our uh, talks that we have coming up. And then of course, next month at our next service. Victoria, would you like to say anything? Uh, just thank you all so much for being here. It's just, it's just an honor and a pleasure every single time. Have a great month, everybody. Sending, sending wishes to Rev William and Rev Sarah and hope to see them by our next service. Thank you all. Have you a and I can take off and let them do the next one. That's right. Let's go <laughs> on vacation, Victoria. You and me to the beach while they handle the service that's, next time. That's right. Although I have to be here for Dr. Mills. He's. Uh, oh, we can't miss Dr. Mills. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah he's definitely one of the best. Yeah. He is amazing. amazing. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much.